And good morning, everybody. It's Russ Barkley back with our friend, the Moose. Hey, Moose, how are you? He gets bacon every time he shows up on the program. I wish I was that lucky. Ooh, he's, he doesn't want to be here now. Okay, Moosey, there you go. A reluctant star at that. Wish I could say the same for me. So, Well, welcome back to our Saturday research review here on a cold, snowy weekend in Richmond. Though it looks like things are improving, I might get to play golf next week. We will see. Here's your dad jokes for the morning. These come to us from Parade.com. And you can see the first one up. Why was the color green notoriously single? It was always so jaded. Think about it. Okay, you'll get it, I'm sure, at some point. Why is Peter Pan always flying? Because he never lands. Ah, a thinking person's joke there. Which state in the U.S. has the most streets? Road Island. Ah, you probably would have come up with that on your own, I'm sure. What's the name of a very polite European body of water? Mare C. You got to separate those, those phonics. All right, last one up and then we'll get started on our research. I used to hate facial hair, but then it grew on me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you all know about my disastrous problem with my beard over a week ago in which I had to really shave it down, but it's coming back. So I thought that joke was apropos. All right, let's move on to the four research articles I found this week that I thought were worth some commentary. There was a bunch more, but most of them, as I've said before, are dissertations and master's theses or their unpublished reviews showing up at various websites like ResearchGate and I don't cover those until they are published and peer-reviewed. So uh, just as so long as you understand why I choose the articles I do, they have to be published in a peer-reviewed journal, and they have to have some clinical relevance. So no animal studies. I don't go into a lot of biochemistry, neuropharmacology, or things like that. I only choose the articles I think might be most interesting to you. Okay, first up is a paper which I don't know how or why this got published unless somebody needed an article for their resume. But here we go. This is a study out of China involving more than 63,000 children and their families. And it was a study to explore what the relationship was between only child status, owning a pet in the household, and risk of ADHD in the children. Now, I cannot for the life of me figure out why you would want to explore that. Maybe only child status, maybe. But whether or not you own a pet, I'm not so sure what that relevance is. But guess what? They did find that only child status was linked to a slightly but significantly higher risk of having a child with ADHD. Now remember, this is a very large sample, so it's easy to get statistical significance even with small levels of risk. But that said, what they found was about a 30% increase in risk of having a child with ADHD. The other thing that they found is that owning a pet any kind of pet, you know, dog, cat, what have you, between zero and three years of age, of the child that is, was also associated with a 59% risk in having a child with ADHD. So, okay, we've got these correlations and you know how I feel about those. And what do the authors go on to conclude? That only child status and ownership of pets is a causal risk factor for ADHD. I'm sorry, this is just so funny because once again, the mistake is made of interpreting a correlation as a cause. It could just as easily or more likely be the other way around, which is that families that already have an ADHD child don't want any more, hence the higher likelihood of only child status. And moreover, Families with ADHD kids are pretty chaotic, so let's just toss a pet into the mix and make it even more so. Maybe it even helps calm the kids down. Might be something useful for the child with ADHD to have around the house. Who knows what this relationship means, but it certainly doesn't mean that owning a pet increases or decreases risk for ADHD 
in any sort of causal way. So that said, let's move on to our next study, which is one looking at whether adult ADHD is linked with any increased risk for non-suicidal self-injury and or suicidal behavior. Now, we kind of already know the answer to this because I've covered it several times previously on this channel, and that is that having ADHD does increase the risk of suicide attempts, particularly if there is comorbid depression, which leads to thinking more about suicide, but it's the impulsivity in ADHD that leads to the greater likelihood of attempts. So we know that, and this study simply indicates the same thing, that yes, having adult ADHD does increase the risk for suicide attempts. Now, they also found that it increases the risk for non-suicidal self-injury, and that could be things like self-cutting and so on. So uh, that we also have known about for a little while, particularly according to the Berkeley Longitudinal Study of Girls, non-suicidal self-harm might actually be more common in girls and women with ADHD than in males. This study did not sort that out, that is, that effect of sex on the findings in the study. But this study, which involved 147 adults with ADHD, did find that they were at increased risk of both forms of injury. So uh, again, it's more replication than anything else. But it was a study that was out of France. And as you know, I do like to highlight some of the international research rather than just always talking about research coming out of the U.S. and North America more generally. All right, next study up is one that comes to us from an international journal, this one being the International Journal of Neuropsychopharmacology, and it's a study looking at the relationship between methamphetamine abuse and genetic liability for ADHD. This study was done in Taipei City over in Taiwan, and it's uh, actually a, a pretty good study that involved 143 patients with methamphetamine abuse, but it also had 77,000 healthy individuals that were the controls, and they were able to do genome-wide scans on these individuals, and they were able to calculate the genetic risk score for ADHD called a polygenic risk score. So they go through, look at the genome, take the known genes that are linked to ADHD so far, of which there's about 22 to 25, but likely to be as many as 70 to 75 or more eventually. So they count up the number that you have. Some studies even weight that count by the significant impact of that gene on risk for ADHD. And then add all that up and look at a polygenic risk score. And what did they find? They found that the greater the number of ADHD genes in the polygenic risk score, the greater the likelihood that the individual had methamphetamine abuse. So greater risk for ADHD and genetic liability associated with greater risk for methamphetamine abuse. And by the way, vice versa, those with methamphetamine abuse had a higher risk for ADHD as well. So interesting study there. Our final study is going to be uh, from the journal Systematic Reviews. This one is a collaborative review out of the UK, Saudi Arabia, and Egypt. And it looked at all of the published literature on the relationship of ADHD to post-traumatic stress disorder. And they found 21 studies that met all of their inclusion criteria for this review and meta-analysis. And what they found was that there is a 28 to 36% comorbidity between ADHD and risk for PTSD. That's pretty high, by the way, suggesting that if you have ADHD, you're going to be more prone to traumatic events and more prone to developing PTSD as a consequence of that. Now, the authors also found that the comorbid group had more impairment 
and more severe symptoms, particularly of PTSD, and had more functional difficulties in daily life than did just the ADHD group alone. So having both disorders together can be increasingly impairing for one's life as well as producing more severe symptoms. Okay, that's your four articles for this Saturday. I hope you enjoyed them as well as having the moose on, reluctant as he was to be part of this uh, Saturday research review, and that you'll join me again next Saturday for another review. So as always, everybody, I conclude with live well, be well, take care. Bye for now.